So the second DRB is over and Fling Posse's Victory CD has gone on sale in Japan. And I wanted to commemorate the occasion by making another hit mic video, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about. That was until I found out that there's a fan-made Fling Posse RPG where you run around as Fling Posse, beating up civilians and committing arson, Kuko is a wizard, Dice is naked, and Jiro has a knife. So let's dive in and take a look at Shibuya Marble Texture RPG. This game is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a game made in RPG Maker 2000 where you play as Fling Posse. It started development back in 2018, the game fully released in 2021, meaning it had been out for about a year by the time I stumbled upon it and played it for myself. It's free and available for download on itch.io and it was made by Echo Rust 9. From what I can tell, this is the first game she's created, and she may have some other original games in the works. Due to Hitmike's nature as an ongoing franchise, there's always a steady stream of new content from it, and I was impressed to see that despite this game beginning development at the tail end of Hitmike's first DRB, the dev continued to incorporate new information on Hitmike as it was being released while she was making the game. You mostly play as Ramada, occasionally switching off to other characters as you traverse each division, completing battles and delivery quests in order to progress the game. You are rewarded microphones on your adventure, and once you have enough from one division, you can move on to the next. The game opens with Ramada swearing vengeance on Jokurai, and things kick off in Shibuya Division, of course, while a chiptune version of the game's namesake plays as the background music. The soundtrack in this is, by and large, 8-bit renditions of familiar hit mic songs, and even includes songs released as late as 2020, like Gangsta's Paradise and Don't Stop the Party. And trust me, as you play, you will not be able to stop yourself from humming along to the background music. The chiptune covers also nicely complement the retro pixel art style of the game's graphics. The overworld environment is also particularly nice. Each division looks distinct and recognizable, and they're all pretty fun to just walk around, which you'll be doing a lot of in the main story. The collectible card art and CG stills are the strongest visual elements of this game, and it's a shame that there's no in-game gallery for saving them and looking at them later. As for the talk sprite art, a lot of it was hit or miss for me. Thankfully, all of Fling Posse looks great, but I can't say the same for some of the later characters. Some of the issues I have aren't even with the art quality, but just consistency. For example, Judo is never given a proper talk sprite to match everyone else, so every time he talks, I feel like my personal space is being accosted. There's a hilarious censored dice sprite that makes him look like a sim in the shower at the beginning of the game, but later on, when we see Samatoki in similar circumstances, his overworld sprite is without clothes, while his talk sprite is with clothes. And it's small things like this that take you out of the game's story and makes you wonder if the dev failed to notice these details. I also took issue with how some of the NPCs look a little too similar to our main characters, and that can feel misleading. Now, keep in mind, this is an RPG Maker game, and what indie RPG would be complete without spooky foreshadowing? It feels like every popular RPG Maker game has to make a hard left into dark and edgy territory, and this game is not about to break that tradition. For those who find the juxtaposition of a sweet cutesy overworld and a grim spooky plot to be beyond cliché, all I have to say is, welcome to Hip Mike. 
This franchise draws you in with colorful character designs and upbeat music, only for everyone to have some kind of emotionally scarring backstory. So I personally find the glitched Game Boy graphics and slightly spooky atmosphere of the main story to be a great fit, especially for a game that focuses on Ramada, who is already associated with glitches and bugged programming in official hit mic materials. The main story of this game sticks to its theme, and I think that makes it a more enjoyable experience. There's also a lot of positive game design choices. You get opportunities to heal before major boss fights. The game brings your whole party up to an appropriate level before the final boss, so you don't have to waste time grinding. And if the player does end up grinding, there's a hidden quest to reward you for accumulating a lot of money. Plus, the collectible cards encourage replayability. The game also doesn't waste your time with any flavor text, and I know that this goes in the minus column for people who like to talk to every NPC in a game, but I am not one of those people. Yes, on the one hand, flavor text can do wonders for world building or be entertaining in its own right if written to be clever enough, but Shibuya Marble Texture RPG is not the kind of game that needs flavor text to help carry it. It knows that the player is here to interact with Hit Mike's characters, not a bunch of nameless NPCs. This game doesn't need to expand on any lore because you can look to Hit Mike's official materials for that. As for snappy one-liners, the game leaves those to Gentaro and Sasura, and doesn't bother to distract the player with filler from unnamed characters. The downside of this is that the player is not encouraged to explore thoroughly because it's a waste of time in most areas. This means it's harder to collect skills, and it also means that it's difficult to know when an NPC will hold important information, or to know if you have to talk to an NPC multiple times in order to progress. That said, none of the puzzles are too difficult or obtuse, and as long as you stock up on revive candy, you can get through anything this game throws at you. Seriously, just stock up on revive candy. It's the best and cheapest item in the game. Healing is a waste of time. Just let your teammates die and revive them to full HP and MP. It's foolproof. I digress. There's obviously a lot of effort that went into this game, but it's still the dev's first game. And it shows. For every nice decision made in the game's design, there's an amateur mistake. For instance, the shop menu, while gorgeous, is a total pain to navigate and purchasing items is inefficient. You can't even see how much money you have. The hearts by Ramada's name in the game menu are cute, but don't reflect his in-game HP. And there's actually no way to check or change your party's stats outside of battle. The status option in the menu just shows you a map and cute little sprites of fling posse that don't depict your in-game party. The game gives you an opportunity to save between sections, but there's no audio cue for after you've saved. This game clearly lacks polish, and all things considered, that's okay. However, the place where those rough edges are the most painful is the English translation. I believe this game was originally written in Russian, and while I'm thankful that an English version of the game exists at all, it's riddled with odd wording and typos. There's even some lines of text that just weren't translated at all. At best, this is hilarious, and at worst, some characters suffer from lapses in their personality. I mean, come on, Jiro would not know how to use this big of a word. I do hope that someday the game gets a proper translation, because I think it deserves one. But thankfully in the meantime, the main story is still comprehensible as it is now. And it is an RPG after all, so the dialogue is broken up with battles and running around the map, so the janky English isn't always in your face. That is, unless you choose to play through the side game. I've been referencing the main game because there is another game that lies within the game of Shibuya Marble Texture RPG, and that game is Hypnosis Love. Between completing each division section of the main RPG story, you will be whisked away to a title screen of a very, very different game. Hypnosis Love is supposed to be Gentaro's in-universe, half-baked AU visual novel about him as a small-town teacher falling in love with a bad boy Dice. 
thankfully, you can opt out of playing through this and return to the main game by selecting out on the Hypnosis Love title screen. If you do decide to subject yourself to it, you will be met with a wall of garbled Google Translate text with no way to save or exit until you button mash through it. Art is the main game's strong suit, but for the side game, the sprites are stiff and rarely emotive. The backgrounds all look like stock photos that were just pulled from Google Images, and they don't even match what's being described half the time. The upbeat chiptune renditions of the hit mic songs are gone, and we get dreary, repetitive instrumental tracks instead. I felt betrayed by the pretty title art that encouraged me to jump into this side game, and was scared I wouldn't be able to escape once I realized there was no way to open the menu in this portion. There's no reason to prompt the player three times to read a fanfic within a fan game that just drags on so long that it could be its own separate fan game, all for the sake of shipping the dev's favorite pairing. And speaking of shipping, it's pretty obvious from the beginning that there's a lot of shipping in this game. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but your mileage will vary depending on if your preferences match the devs. It's all harmless fun at the end of the day, and mostly just adds to the absolute absurdity that is this game, especially the Yokohama portion. Shibuya Marble Texture RPG is a fun reimagining and exploration of Ramada's and Chakurai's rivalry. It's a delightful, fourth-wall-breaking, deus ex machina spin on hit mic settings and characters. I had a lot of fun playing it, and it's a treat from the fandom side of hit mic. If anything that I described sounds intriguing, then I encourage you to play this game for yourself. But if you want to see my raw reactions to it, there'll be a link in the description to my initial playthrough. So congrats to Fling Posse, and as always, thanks for watching.